What did your strategy planning experience at Imagination teach you about integrating experience into product? So Imagination is an amazing, amazing company. Uh, it was founded in 1978 by a guy called Gary Withers, who had a passion for theater. So that's really where the business was founded on. Um, you know, he, he, he's an incredible designer, um, very charismatic guy. And for 30 years, Imagination kind of rode up the rankings in the design, uh, in design ranks for design agencies in the UK. And it's now the, the largest independent design company in the world. And it really built this culture of experience. And that's really, so, I mean, it would probably call itself, an, um, you know, an experience consultancy of yeah. sorts today. And really, that because of this kind of founding on theatre and this passion for the live spectacle, it went on to produce, um, you know, road shows for large automotive brands, um, 3D retail environments, pop-up stuff. I mean, a whole load of really interesting things. And I spent nearly a couple of years there um, really researching. It was almost like doing a sort of PhD or something. Yeah. Uh, really researching the experience economy, as they would have called it. Uh, there's a really fascinating book by a couple of chaps called Pine and Gilmore, a couple of Harvard business guys, who wrote a book called Experience Economy about how the whole world is becoming uh, an experience. All brands are kind of migrating from products to experiences. And a lot of this is translated into what Moo does. So they talk about an experience economy being a, a transition from you basically got a coffee bean because that's your commodity. Then you've got like the coffee bean in a bag with a brand on it, that's your brand. And then you go into kind of various versions of a product like Nescafe, that's the next thing up. And as you go up this kind of hierarchy, things get more and more expensive and the margin increases because there's more work to turn that into different things along the scale. So you've got your Nescafe, and then you've got your Starbucks, or you've got your Dunkin' Donuts maybe, which is like a service. So someone has poured this into a cup and they give it to you, and you go from one cent to 10 cents to a dollar to, to you know, I don't know, it's like five bucks to get a cup of coffee today. And, he's, and these guys kind of had this theory that, you know, experience is where everything's going next, or transformation, they say, is the, is the final frontier, if you like, for um, people who, who work with brands. So what we've tried to do with Moo, and what I learned from Imagination was, you know, you can charge much, much more for an experience than you can for a commodity, or mm -hmm. from a product, or for a brand, you know, those kinds of things. So we really tried to make everything a real experience, whether it's the silly email that you get when you place your order, to the packaging, to the blog, to meeting the strange and quirky team that I've hired at an event, or our trade show stand, or whatever it is, really make it a real experience. Yeah. Because pe that lasts for people, that's meaningful. And I think where we need to go to is, is something transformative. Um, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Self-actualization, the thing at the top of the pyramid for all human beings, is to have something that um, enables you to you know, transform, to improve, whatever it is. Um, so, Moo is continually striving to make a great experience for the customer, but to go on to help them transform whether that's, so not just enjoy the experience, but the products be really useful, yes. you know, for them to get a job or to stand out better or, um, to, or to leave their job that they, they don't enjoy and to go out into the world and, and do something. Yeah. So, hopefully, if we, f if we fit in that area of this experience economy, um, will have done a good thing and hopefully our customers will thank us for it.